Hello and welcome to Negative Feedback. First of all, I'd like to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this episode. Whether you need a website, domain or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. So in this video, we're going to be talking about something that I think a lot more people should be doing, and that is printing your photos. So a lot of people probably don't know how to print an image from film. So what we're going to be doing is choosing three different ways that you can print a photo, and we're going to be making three different versions of the same image. So we're here at Bayer, which is the lab that I use. We're going to be doing a hand C-type print from the negative, a digital C-type from a scan, and also an inkjet from the same scan. So the image that I chose to be printed was a photo that I took on 8x10 on Portra 400 NC. The first step in making all of this happen was scanning the negative so I had a good digital file to play with to be able to print from. I did this with the drum scanner at Bayer, but by no means is that what you have to use to get a print ready file, just sometimes it's really handy to get the extra dynamic range from the drum scanner. But it turned out we wouldn't be needing the scan just now because the first print would be making in the dark room by hand. So I was taken downstairs to meet Roy who would be printing my image and it turns out he'd been printing for 40 years so he's pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty noisy in the dark room, there's a lot of machines going on everywhere in the lab so unfortunately we couldn't get any good audio down there. So I'm going to try and pass on the knowledge and you're going to have to pretend that I am the expert somehow. So the first step to printing from a negative is to actually mount the negative itself into this slide which then fits into the enlarger. At this point you have to make sure that the negative is nice and clean. You don't want any dust in it now because that will then be projected onto the final print. So the enlarger is where all the magic happens in a handprint. It essentially just projects light through your negative onto some light sensitive paper, which then in this instance is taken upstairs and developed through a machine, which takes it through a chemical process to finish the print. Colour enlargers have four different filters, which you can change to adjust the feel of the photo. You have the density, which is the same as a neutral density filter, if you know what that is for your camera, which essentially just makes the print lighter or darker. You then have three different colour channels, yellow, magenta and cyan. Altering these three colours will alter the colour of your print, so some negatives just happen to have more of a magenta touch and at this point you will change all your settings to try and get the right look that you want for your print. Now this is actually pretty hard to do well, uh, this is where Roy's lots of practice comes in really handy. So after the negative was in the enlarger and we had a rough basic setting in, it was time to actually make the first test print. Uh, unfortunately, because this all happens in complete darkness, we weren't able to film this bit, so we just have to use your imagination. So the first thing you do is print a few test strips. So instead of making a full print every time, you just cut one piece of paper into a few strips, and then when you think you've got it quite close, you print the whole thing. So Roy, having all of his knowledge of how to use the darkroom, set it up with what he thought would be right, and made two test prints. However, they came out a bit too dark for my liking, and also a bit too green. So Roy went back in, changed the settings, and had another go. And this led us to a point where everything was looking pretty good, so we decided to do our first full-length print. At this point, I was pretty happy with the images. Uh, there was only one thing which I wanted to change, which was to get a bit more emphasis back on the clouds. Because the clouds are a bit brighter than the rest of the image, when it's printed completely as it is in the negative, you lose a bit of cloud detail, which I was quite fond of. So Roy did this by hand, uh, with some dodging and burning and essentially just a big piece of cardboard which stopped the light hitting portions of the image, which I ended up being really happy with, so that was the final print. Up next were the two different digital prints. So for this, we loaded up the files which I had made at home onto one of the calibrated screens in the lab. Quite often, your screens at home are not calibrated to the same as the printers, so it's important to have this step, if you can, where you can Make sure everything is looking how you thought it was, because your screen might be completely different to what you think it is. And in this case, yeah, it was a bit different. The images looked a bit too cool. So we warmed them up a bit, and we got ready to send it to the first printer, which was the digital C-type. Before making this video, this was the type of printing that I had done the most. You actually use the exact same paper as in the hand C-type print. Just instead of the light travelling through the negative in an enlarger, it's printed in this special machine where it projects the light directly onto the paper. When you're printing digitally, you don't really tend to have to do any test prints because your screen's already calibrated, so you know what to expect. However, in this case, we decided that it actually could have done with a bit more warmth. So we ended up doing one more print, and that was the final one that we were happy with. We then moved on to the inkjet print, which is definitely the most different process. The paper in an inkjet isn't actually light sensitive. The printer actually sprays all the inks directly onto the paper. This allows there to be way more different paper stocks available. You can get so many different textures and 
warmths of papers. You can get really shiny ones and really like crinkly textured ones. Uh, it's really cool, it's definitely a lot to play with. So I got handed this book of samples where I had a flick through and picked the one that I liked the most. And I ended up picking a photo rag. So this isn't one of the most textured, but it still has this really nice kind of thick, subtle texture. I did think when I was making the print, how often once it's printed do you actually touch it? Because you normally put it in a frame. But it does actually take effect on how the image looks when you, because there is this texture going on. And this paper was actually a bit naturally warmer than the other papers. It's slightly off-white as it comes. So we actually ended up not changing the file and printed exactly the same as we did for the digital C-type. And we stuck with that. It is noticeably more warm, but I thought that was interesting to show that as a difference. The texture from the rag actually softens the image up a fair bit. It doesn't look as sharp as the digital C-type, and I think that's because it's kind of going over these little bumps in the paper. And it also adds this really cool look to the clouds particularly. Uh, where it's kind of got this texture. It's almost like looking at a nice grain in an image. It kind of adds this extra element of depth, and it's nice. So this then allowed me to stick all three prints on the wall side by side and have a comparison. I guess the first thing that I noticed was the variance in colour. Side by side, it may appear that one image is way too cool or warm, but when you view them individually, they actually all look great. The handprint is definitely the softest of the three. Since the image was projected through a lens, this does take effect to the sharpness. However, it does also add this different look to the image. It's kind of got this almost painterly quality and this 3D look. A lot of the edges are really nice and gradual. There's the line of trees looks amazing. Uh, it's really different and it is really nice. The digital C-type, on the other hand, is incredibly sharp. It's pretty epic how sharp it is. And at some points you almost could think it is borderline too sharp. On some of the more jagged edges, it is very detailed, and I think in this case, some of the hand printed aspects do lend it a bit nicer to this. However, you could have a less sharpened image before you send it to print. This isn't just C type printing that does this, but you have complete control of how sharp your image is before you send it to print. So in this case, I could have made my image a bit softer before sending it. And then the inkjet, I think, is actually my least favourite in this case. It's softer, like how the handprint is, but it it doesn't have the same effect of the handprint. And I think this paper would really lend itself to maybe a portrait. Uh, I think with this kind of image where it's so detailed, part of how the image works is the detail. And uh, I think the texture didn't necessarily play it well into this. But I think the clouds look amazing. Uh, that is one thing that I really like about this. So I think if you're printing something from maybe 35mm or medium format where the detail wasn't as crazy and maybe it was a, a more subtle scene. It could look amazing and it's definitely something that I'd play with. It's the chosen paper for most artists. It's more interesting, you've got a lot you can do. Uh, I just think this, this image in particular wasn't the ideal situation for it. So which one did I actually prefer though? I think in this case it's really hard to choose. However, in the future, I'm probably just going to stick to the digital C-type. As much as I liked the handprint and it gave this really nice feel to it, since most of my work is primarily online, it's nice to have everything looking exactly the same. When you make a handprint, it's hard to make it look exactly identical to your scan. Uh, and I think because primarily people see my stuff online, I'd rather everything look identical. Uh, whether that's on Instagram, my website, or as a print. However, I do think for a special occasion, there is nothing better than the hand print. I think if you're doing just a one-off, nice print, hand print is the way to go. But if you want to make things consistent and be able to produce a run of prints that are all identical, that's where I'm going to stick to the digital C-type. So hopefully you found this interesting. I know I found it interesting as a process, but hopefully you did too, and hopefully this will inspire some of you to print more of your work. It's one thing looking at everything on a screen, but it really does change your feelings about a photo when you can actually see it there in a physical thing. Not enough people do it, and whether you print it huge or you're just really small prints, it's definitely something that more people should try out and it doesn't have to be expensive. So quickly before the video ends, I'd like to thank Squarespace again for sponsoring this episode. If 
you're looking to build a website for your photographic portfolio, your shop, your blog, anything, you can build it on Squarespace and it's really not hard to build a really nice, professional, clean looking site. And you can get 10% off using the code negative feedback. So thank you for watching this video and hopefully there'll be another video in a week.